to a mosque. But our work extends beyond prosecutions. Community outreach is a critical component of the Justice Department's hate crimes prevention strategy. The Civil Rights Division holds regular meetings that bring together Muslim, Arab, Sikh, and South Asian community leaders with various federal agencies and department leaders. These conversations are not always easy. They are not always easy, but they are essential. Last year, I established an Arab American and Muslim engagement advisory group to help identify more effective ways for the Justice Department to foster greater communication and collaboration, as well as a new level of respect and understanding between law enforcement and Muslim and Arab American communities. Now, these relationships are critical to ensuring both public safety and civil rights. And in many communities, I'm pleased that our engagement efforts are producing results. For instance, just last week in San Diego, law enforcement officers met with Somali residents to discuss the arrest of four members of their community, to address potential tensions, and to share information. But in other parts of the country, we know that we have more work to do to strengthen the relationship between law enforcement and those in Muslim and Arab American communities. Some have expressed concerns about the recent charges brought against Muhammad Osman Muhammad in Portland, Oregon, or his alleged involvement in planning and attempting to execute a terror attack during a Christmas tree lighting celebration. Well, Mr. Muhammad's arrest was the result of a successful undercover operation, a critical and frequently used law enforcement tool that has helped identify and diffuse public safety threats, such as those posed by potential terrorists, drug dealers, even trial, child pornographers for decades. These types of operations have proven to be an essential law enforcement tool in uncovering and preventing potential terror attacks. Since 2001, more than 400 individuals have been convicted of terrorism and terrorism-related violations in our federal courts. And in those terrorism cases where undercover sting operations have been used, there is a lengthy record of convictions. Now, our nation's law enforcement professionals have consistently demonstrated not just their effectiveness, but also their commitment, I think, to the highest standards of professional conduct, integrity, and fairness. Now, I make no apologies for how the FBI, ag FBI agents handled their work in executing the operation that led to Mr. Muhammad's arrest. Their efforts helped to identify a person who repeatedly expressed his desire and intention to kill innocent Americans. As you may have read, and as the affidavit alleges, Mr. Muhammad chose the target location months in advance. He provided FBI operatives with bomb components and detailed operational instructions, and repeatedly refused to change course when he was reminded that a large crowd, including children, would be in harm's way. Because of law enforcement's outstanding work, outstanding work Mr. Muhammad is no longer plotting attacks, and he will be brought to justice. But you also have my word that the Justice Department will just as vigorously continue to pursue anyone who would target Muslims or their houses of worship. Those who characterize the FBI's activities in this case as entrapment, I believe simply do not have their facts straight or do not have a full understanding of the law. Our nation's law enforcement officials deserve our gratitude and our respect. Without their work and their willingness to place public safety above personal security, government simply could not meet its most critical responsibility of protecting American lives. Now, meeting this responsibility has never been more difficult. Our nation faces a determined and sophisticated enemy, and as I've said repeatedly, I am committed to using every available tool to protect the American people. But I will not sacrifice, and I will not compromise our civil liberties. And I will not support activities that jeopardize our nation's ability to serve as a beacon of hope for all the world, and as a model of strict adherence to the rule of law. Neither <laughs> neither will I allow, as long as I have the honor of leading the United States Department of Justice, neither will I allow Muslim and Arab American communities or any community of Americans to be persecuted because of their faith or national origin. There is no... <laughs> There is no question or doubt that threats to our national security are real. Together, together, we have mourned the loss of our fellow Americans in New York City, Virginia, and Pennsylvania, in Fort Hood, Texas, and in Mumbai, Yemen, and Uganda. Each of these attacks was a reprehensible act of cowardice 
inspired by a radical and corrupt ideology, one that systematically denies human rights, values women and girls, and perverts the peaceful traditions and teachings of Islam. But as you know, and I know, the vulgar actions of a misguided few do not reflect the values of an entire faith or people. And while violence and the loss of innocent lives can be cause for anger and grief, we must not let it result in widespread bias and bigotry or in acts of vengeance. It is our responsibility to discourage and condemn such acts and to help change misguided perceptions. This work begins by meeting fear with reason, by meeting ignorance with information, and by meeting suspicious gazes with an outstretched hand. Now, I realize that this is easier said than done. This requires great courage, and it requires uncommon grace. And yet, your organization and so many hopeful and committed individuals are finding ways to bridge divides. The public education efforts that you have launched and the steps that you are taking to unite law enforcement and Muslim communities are critical. You are paving new paths for cooperation. You are leading the way toward peace and healing. You are making a difference. You must keep at it. Too much is at stake. Too much is at risk. With your continued support, continued guidance, and continued partnership, I am confident that together we can confront and overcome threats to our fellow citizens and to all innocent people. I'm also certain that we can ensure that all components of our government can be as sensitive and respectful as they are effective. There is not a tension in that last declaration. Together, I am sure that we can help build a future that honors America's enduring creed, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. So I thank you again for inviting me to join you this evening. I look forward to our continued collaboration in the pursuit of a more perfect union and a more peaceful existence for all Americans. Thank you very much.